<laughs> What's up guys, how are you doing today? Today I have a very interesting match for you, not really a competitive game, not the game that has been played in the tournament, but actually a Hero League match. It was sent to me by a friend of mine, Pally Time sent a game over and he said like, hey buddy, take a look at this one, you might like the replay. And I liked it a lot. I watched the game and I was like, hey dude, I'm gonna definitely make a cast to that. So this is it today, it's a Cursed Hollow match and it was a Hero League game where Pally Time decided to go for Rainer and he went up against a team that at the beginning of the match just struggled a little bit, but so then towards the end of the game or towards the mid game and suddenly that entire dynamic of the game changed completely and there was an absolute blow to blow match where both teams were just like aiming for the victory and not giving an inch. Great game, very enjoyable and I hope that you guys are going to like it as well so check it out. Here's the game, a Hero League match with uh, my friend Pally Time. Welcome to today's match everybody here on Color TV, red versus blue and as I already mentioned we have a pretty awesome game today, a pretty fun one, Malfurion for the blue team and Nala LCM, we have Jones K on Arthur, so the left side of the map, Cursed Hollow, Yin Yang on Vala, the Ponage on Rega and Noi on Illidan. To the right side of the map it's Top Smoker with a Gaslow, OP Mage on Zeratul, Leggy Saiten on ETC, Victorious on Lily and the man himself, my friend Pal time on arena Five, so this is gonna four, be a pretty fun three, match I can already promise you that much and we're gonna see one. who's gonna take it here Pelly time right at the beginning of the game already trying to coordinate the team and already mentioning that they should maybe start roaming here <laughs> a little bit of sarcasm immediately being dropped not everybody seems to be a friend of a good coordination or communication in the early game but at least it seems like the rest of his team is currently in voice so uh, that should help quite a lot looking at the team Team compositions before we're starting with the match itself on the side of the blue team we're having a one healer two healers actually so far we have Rega together with Malfury and Illidan is going to be very happy about that if you don't have a Tacit on your team a double healer already gives you a lot of momentum when you play Illidan you can just do so much more if you don't have to be afraid of uh, yeah, running out of health you can just like, jump in every single time and try to hunt targets down it's a pretty awesome uh, it's an awesome setup for him they have also another damage dealer with Vala which is going to be pretty awesome Awesome for them too. And as you can see, as a tank, we have Arthur's down at the bot lane, Jones K playing him here. And Arthur's a hero that you don't see all that often anymore. Blizzard hit him pretty hard with a nerf hammer the last time that they uh, introduced a new patch to Heroes of the Storm. But he can still be played, and here in that Hero League game this, uh, we have here, it's going to be interesting how he will be able to do. On the side of the red team, we have one specialist already with good old Gazlow. He can, of course, make sure that, oh, maybe even a kill against Illidan and the first blood for the the red team well done OP mage and top smoke on his gaslow able to get him the towers the turrets helping out but Jones is in position to maybe get a kill here now as well gaslow needs to be careful our specialist will be very helpful for the team later on getting all those mercenary camps and of course his pushing power is pretty strong too if you land a wombo combo together with a zero tool using his void prism in the later stage of the game you can do a lot of damage as well and ETC jumping in, uh, good face melt that he had there, but nobody to follow that damage up. Illidan maybe going a bit to him, go ham or go home, and that's at least his motto for now. But he has to jump back once again, seems to be very busy with those turrets, as we're seeing in the mid lane. Lili as the single healer for the red team. Lili of course with very impressive healing numbers, especially in the, the later stage of the game. Pretty decent hero for beginners, but not really the strongest one that we have there. Could have seen an Uther in this particular case, but Lili it is. And Lili is actually not too bad if you want to keep a low HP hero alive, as Zeratul is now experiencing firsthand. Oh, but OP Mage is trying to go in. Pally Time already announcing the next tribute here. Uh, Reyna is down at the bot lane. Fighting Vala in this case. We're gonna go over those builds in just a bit as well. Level 5 now for both of the teams. One kill so far for the red team. And good job they've done here. And having Vala at the bot lane with a multi shot build for yeah. Pally, uh, against Palatine. And actually, that's the first tribute fight. And the tribute right in uh, the bot lane is, of course, extremely close to Reyna. Palatine going uh, for give me more on level 1 and then confident aim on level 4. A pretty standard build on Reyna. The Q build for him is very strong and becomes extremely powerful once you hit level 16 with the bullseye. 
We have already Lily moving in, and it looks like she's going for full heal build here, taking on level 1 and Pro Toss with increased range and also the healing ward on level 4. That should do a lot for the team. And we're having OP Mage moving in on his Zera tool. He's actually going for a right click build here, not for the standard Mage build, but a right click build instead. Oh, and they're trying to go for Malfurion. A good route by Malfurion takes down Zera tool. And here comes the kill against Malfurion. A one versus one. Whoa, two more heroes die as Illidan and ETC go down. It's a three versus three three now here at the bot lane and Palatine doing his thing getting locked down by Arthas but he's still in range and can take down the tank of the opponent's team. Job well done by the red team here getting four kills in total now against two and the first tribute is also theirs. Of course Gazlo with his turret doing a whole lot of work in this case Manage, like just able to secure that tribute with a lot of turrets and making it very difficult for the blue team to move in in this case. Especially in Hero League if you don't have all of your mates in voice it's extremely important to coordinate things well to ping on the map and that's something that we're seeing from both teams here. If you look at the build that Gazlo is using, Gazlo not a hero that we see too much in competitive play, but he's actually one of those heroes that can do a lot in uh, at least Hero League. You can have quite some fun with him, pretty fun hero to play but not the strongest addition to the team unless you really aim for one of those Wonongbo combo compositions and I guess that's something that we could see here later on. For now up at the top, Illidan again in trouble and down he goes! Illidan just without support, not really the strongest one and OP Mage and uh, well ETC they both tried to double him and they were successful with that. Looking at the rest of the builds now with Zeratul we're having Seasoned Marksman, Sustained Anomaly and Searing Attack so that right click build that has been around for quite some time. Most pro players will tell you that it is inferior to the caster build but you can do some serious damage if your opponent is not locking you down. And in this case another kill by OP Mage getting Rega out of the picture. Six kills versus two. Great momentum for the red team for Palatine team here in the early stages of the game. We're having in regards to the builds on uh, Gazlo Extra, TNT, Clockwork, Steam Fist and Rocket Turret XL for the extra turrets, which is extremely important. Jones on Arthurs, nearly dying here, but a good lockdown after Malfurion already started things off with the route, but in comes Zeratul again, and it's so difficult for them to really get a hold of Zeratul here. OP Mage is doing this extremely well. And down here at the bot, on the other hand, we're having another tribute spawning. Pally time is already busy, trying to get one of those out of the picture. Immediately the ETC ult, but a bit too late. Yin Yang is alive. Illidan is moving back. Zeratul on level 10 now using his Void Prison. They have level 10 so much faster than the opponent's team. Those early game kills gave them a lot of experience. A nice heal by the Ponage and also Malfurion himself trying to save the life of the healer. But as it happens, another kill for the red team. Oh, Pally time rocking the carpet here. Moving in with the magic carpet and has of course his Reina's Raider skilled as a level 10 heroic ability. We're having Gravel Bomb and Void Prison taken. These two abilities will be extremely strong together in the later stages of the game and this is of course what the red team was aiming for with this composition. We're having Lily with a thousand jugs that she's already been using and on the other side on the blue team we're getting the ultimates now into the game as well. Heroic abilities coming in and interestingly enough we have on level 7 Caltrops being used by Vala instead of Battle Momentum which would have been the standard talent for this particular one. Now, uh, Pally Time already announcing where the next tribute will spawn. There are certain rules to the tributes, and so far we had two of them at the bottom of the map and one to the left. So he immediately deduced that one of them, or the next one, will be spawning at the top right. Sinragosa, the heroic ability on Arthurs. We're seeing Tranquility being used for Malfurion, Ancestral Healing for Rega, and Metamorphosis on Illidan. With the build that they are running here, they could have even thought about getting Bloodlust on Rega and simply relying on Malfurion for the heal. It's it's definitely a build by Illidan and especially Vala, of course, can do a lot of damage with the right clicks. Arthas himself now could go for builds that help him with that as well. And the build that he's been using here is now looking straight at Regeneration Master, Frozen Wastes, and we're having him with Frost Strike. So Frost Moan even a bit more powerful than he usually would be. Oh, the Ponage is maybe in the wrong spot here, but a great move by Malfurion. And here comes the Void Prison, but no Gaslow to follow it up. He's busy to the right side getting that hard cam. Now he's moving in. Sindragosa is jumping in as we see already the Reign of Vengeance doing work, but still the ETC all 
Gold and Gaslow getting three of them with a stun. ETC moves in a face melt, pushes everybody away. They get the first kill, but they lose ETC. The Ponage is trying to keep himself alive as Gaslow dies. Oh my god, Yin Yang on his on his father doing so much work, but Pally Time moves in and takes him down. Illidan, the only survivor for now. Pally is doing work, even though he misses this Q. Doesn't get the penetrating round in, but there's no need for that as they still have three heroes in the vicinity of the tribute and take it. Once again, a stylish with the carpet is moving away there. And we have the curse against the blue team now. So far they didn't really have a fun time here. Five kills against 13, level 12 versus 13. It's pretty tricky for them to really withstand this much pressure now. At the bot lane there's already a siege giant camp starting to push in. If you look at the damage then you can really tell that especially on the, the red team we're having Pally Time and Zeratul doing most of the damage. On the left side it is of course Vala, no big surprise there. Illidan is trying to do his thing. But it's very tricky for him to stay alive in those fights and there's another one happening. Uh, just as we speak the fort in the mid lane is already gone but once again we have Gaslow moving in with his stuns but suddenly the red team is being chased away and Gaslow is in a lot of trouble as he's locked down by a Howling Blast, but ETC goes in for the safe. Illidan is a bit too fast on Syndragos, are slowing everybody down. Pally Time in trouble, trying to heal himself up, using his Inspire and moving away as we speak. Saves his ass just in the last second. And as you can see here on level 13 for him already, the double barreled. And on level 7, we have the Revolution Overdrive. So Pally Time with a very, very crisp Q build that he's using here. The standard build that you see from players, from, from Fnatic and most of the top teams in the meantime as well. We're having also on our right click Zeratul Assassin's Blade taken. But here comes an attempted lockdown against the Rat Team. Not working out though since Jones just barely misses his Owling Blast. That was a close one though. Up to the top, we're having a big, big wave moving in now against the blue team, and that took already down one of the forts. Bosses are still up, and bot lane, well, we've been talking about those two siege giants earlier today already, and they are still doing work. These guys have been busy. No matter what they've been paid, they are definitely underpaid, because they are going the extra mile here, and I like it. At the same time, a bit of a trap, and oh boy, that could be a bad one. Here comes the blue team, and they are none the wiser right now. OP mage is starting to move in, and oh my god, they have no idea. They are totally oblivious. They're not even looking for it. And Paddy Time read them like a book. <laughs> well, he did. And now they can, of course, try to reap what they saw. They're jumping in and they're going straight for the stun ETC with the old Malfurion is the first to die. Jones doesn't make it either. Two heroes dead. Paddy Time captures the boss and we're having OP Mage trying to aim for Vala now as well. Yes, there he is. Gets the Singularity Spike in and goodbye buddy. Noi on his Illidan moves away. There's a last second Ancestral Healing trying to help him out just in case. Pally time with the pressure at the bot lane and they hit level 16 already. So in this case they can rely on the extra heroic ability. Pally time now going for the bullseye of course on 16. Great talent to have and the damage of him will skyrocket now. We're having them with an attempt to go to the top boss now as well. Well, apparently not. They're going to push the mid lane. And the Pally Time knows the rules of playing in publics, of course, perfectly. If your team doesn't want to do something, even if it's the right choice, then just run with them. It's much better than being caught alone on the map while leaving your opponents or the rest of your team fighting in a 4 versus 5 situation. The level 13 talent, that is what the blue team is relying upon right now, and they're having a double giant killer. No clue why Rega didn't pick his talent. Feral Lunge would be a great addition, but he might also go for the heal there instead. OP Mage trying to keep them at bay as the rest of the team barrels down on the mid keep, and they're going straight for that 17 versus 15, the talents here. Oh, Illidan jumping in with his metamorphosis already. Palatine using Reyna's Raiders to push them back. Arthurs is still dead. OP Mage is going for Zaponage, who has still not taken his 13 talent for some reason. On the side of Lily we're having a herbal cleanse on level 16 trying to get all those influences away. There's actually not too much to get rid of in this case so uh, maybe a bit more of a focus on heal would have been the better choice here but it's not a bad uh, talent by any means. And right now we're having also, of course, Gaslow with much more power there. Oh, Illidan, maybe in a bit of a bad spot, needs to make sure that his team is with him so he can rely upon them. The perfect setup for Gaslow, but he's again at the other side of the map trying to go for the camps here. With a gravel bomb and a good stun in this case with a Void Prism setup, that would have been absolutely amazing for them. As is, though, they need to be careful if they really try to go for boss because the entire team for the blue team is up once again. They might not have a level 16 talent, but they're going to have it very very soon.
currently already looking towards the left side. We're having uh, Yin Yang in this case going for Giant Killer. We didn't really point that out specifically, but you probably saw that already. I mean, the ta oh, the boss attacked right now. There is Jones. Good Howling Blast, Pally Time moving in, he has the double barrel, and they are moving in. Sendragos are slowing everybody down, and Yin Yang is moving in from the side. They don't have the 16 talent just yet, and ETC making them dance once again. The party animal is in the midst of things as usual, but that, oh my god, that multi-shot hits every single one of them. Pally Time is in trouble so far, he hasn't died just yet. Jones goes down, and that fight does not work out for them. A bit sad for the blue team, they had to fight without the 16 talent. If they they would have waited a bit longer, they might have had a great shot there since Gaslo during all of this was just capping one of the tributes. So suddenly it's 19 kills against 6. Well and we all know that Heroes of the Storm is all about the late game. If you can keep yourself alive long enough then you might be able to start a comeback here because up to this point, let's be honest, Blue Team has taken a beating. 16 talents are now there and Rega takes on 13 Stormcaller as the additional talent but refuses to take a 16 talent. Not quite sure what's up with that boy. Um, but he apparently didn't realize that he has another talent available to him. Pally time is in trouble here. The team is coming in to help him out. Vala with a blood for blood. Tenacious roots on Malfurion as a 16 talent. And we're having Arthurs with the immortal call. They're moving in and they want Pally time. They want him bad. But he moves back once again. Ancestral healing. And that root is absolutely amazing. And everybody here. The grabber bomb not doing too much work. They're jumping in. But too many of the heroes are not really with the team. Rega goes down. The coordination for the red team is just so much better as Arthur's dies now as well and Pally Time just leading the front once again using the Reyna's Raiders and that's what a fearsome leader is supposed to be and to do. Go in, take them down and lead the charge and that's exactly what Reyna is currently doing here. They're trying to go for the core, already starting to attack that pretty hard and there's only two heroes alive. Maybe they can do it here but they need to be careful. Illidan and Vala can pack a punch and they're jumping in already. Lili is very low but only 80% on the core but down goes Gaslo and Lili is not making it either only two alive and I don't think they are gonna be able to make it yin yang and belly time no all of them die it's a complete wipe five heroes down and now it's 11 kills versus 22 and that is bad bad news there's one more tribute that the red team would have needed to get another curse upon the red and uh, blue team they are trying to finish it but they didn't get a chance and suddenly with those five kills if you are behind you get an underdog bonus you get an experience bonus and they are looking at level 18 versus 90 now it's one oh 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 bad idea Zeratul bad idea bad move oh Zeratul trying to escape here trying to cap the tribute and get the curse but yeah just barely survives in this case they get the tribute ultimate of course wasted nobody really sees them but they're jumping for the boss as we speak the mid lane still being attacked and with three catapults, uh oh, they need to be careful. The blue team apparently completely oblivious to what's happening right now. Jones is moving in at last, but still 50% on the core and that core is hurting and it's hurting a lot. We are down to 43% for them and that is bad. Losing 10% on the core just like this is something that you should never, never risk if you can help it. And they could have moved back a lot faster. Uh oh, Malfurion, that was not really the smartest move. Should have moved moved away first but yep they are trying to run here the problem is that we have OP Mage and Zeratul already jumping in where's that singularity spike still in cooldown the heal but it's too late Malfurion down once again 23 kills versus 11 19 versus 18 we're closing in on the 20s for the red team slowly and steadily they're having all of their heroes now in position ah the carpet there it is belly time moving in once more helping them out with the siege shine camp here Oh, we finally have Rhaegar also with the 16 talent, the blood for blood taken as the rest of them just waits there. Jones with another Howling Blast using that already and we have not only another tribute up on the map but also the boss is up for grabs once more. So the red team is trying to go for the tribute first. The boss of the blue team by the way is starting to barrel down on that keep so bad news for Palace time and his boys. We have Noi already jumping in. Sendragosa slowing them. In comes Illidan. This time he has the shield. Look at that rain of vengeance. That was exactly what they needed.
needed. Pelly time is in trouble as Illidan goes high on him. ETC making three of them dance. It's a party. But the first hero to die is still Illidan. Without heal, with all of those healers captured in the Void Prism, he couldn't do a whole lot there. But Jones takes down Lily, and suddenly there's no healer anymore for that team. Pelly time doing his thing, but he might not be strong enough here to take all of them down. Jones is trying to move in against ETC, and he locks him down. And yes, OP Mage is barely escaping. Pelly time, on the other hand, is... Oh my god, like he's getting away, isn't he? No, Yin Yang moves in. Pelly time dying as well. Three kills against two. Another victory for the blue team and the attempt of a comeback as Zeratul is being dropped now too. Suddenly it's 25 kills versus 15. Level 20 versus level 20. Talents taken. Miniature black hole. We're having a rewind on Zeratul. There's also the ball of the storm on ETC and the jug of a million cups for Lili. Kali time? Not taking his talent just yet. Might go for ball of the storm. He has a couple of options actually. Nexus Frenzy is another one that he could use. We're seeing Serenity taken on a good old Malfurion with a hardened shield on Arthas that will help him a lot. That level 20 is pretty damn good for the blue team. Nexus Frenzy on Bala, Farseer's Blessing now on Rhaegar, not going for the Storm Shield that we so often see in competitive play. Demonic Form being used on Illidan over Nexus Blades or alternatively the Blink of the Storm or the Bolt of the Storm. Right now we're having another boss being taken and well that boss 18 minutes in, that can do work. Especially, of course, since that fort is still alive and they will be able to take this one. That should give them a slight lead in experience and therefore maybe even a stat lead if they capture the next talent. For now, it's still 43% on their coin. Keep in mind, it's really important that they were at 50 and then the catapults were moving in. So losing 10% on their coin is a problem. Oh, OP Mage is going for the calls. Ah, he's going for the shot caller roll here and already announcing that they should go for the boss as fast as they can. Now the blue team is in this case actually ahead. They are ahead when it comes to experience and as you can see they also destroy the keep up to the top lane. So they have one lane pushing. They're trying to set up a bit of a flank but Malfurion is just like walking in. If you are as old as that guy you are going to be a bit senile. You can't help that. ETC moving in and going for the dance again. There is no interrupt for them but there it is. Malfurion lo losing his old pally time. The first to die but look at that stun. The gravel bomb comes Coming into play, Gaslow already down. This is bad news. ETC, that's not gonna work, buddy. Zeratul tried that earlier and it didn't. Vala finally dies, but Illidan is going ham. This guy is going man mode right now. ETC moves back with another power slide. But there comes again Syndragosa. Here we are. Hyun Miaru is going straight for it. And we have a curse against the red team. Uh oh, things are suddenly looking pretty grim for Pally Time and his guys. A great game so far, like an overwhelmingly perfect game at the beginning of the match for the red team, but now suddenly they are in trouble. That attempt to take down the core over here could mean the throw. Reyna already announcing, all right, boys, this might have been by mistake here. I'm gonna try and sit back a bit more in the next fight so that he can't take me out as fast. He's getting super focused and he's right about it. They need Reyna. They need Reyna in the back. Ah, uh, Lily apparently not too happy about the development of the game after such an early lead. It's quite understandable, but maybe a bit too pessimistic here. And Pally time, it is. That is once again that fearless leader, Reyna. That's exactly what he's doing. Just making sure that everybody is inspired here. No talent pun intended. Well, they are still alive. They're still alive and kicking, but 56% on their own core is, of course, pretty brutal. Yep, they lost quite a lot there, but still, it's 43 against 56. It's a close game. 22, the level against 21. We're having all of them moving back. Looking at the damage here again as they are starting to meet up at the boss up to the top. Reyna with 63,000, 83,000 on Vala. Vala moving in once more. They're going for it. The stun happening, though. And down there, Illidan. Where's the heal? There's no support. He jumps back just barely but there's the void prison they need to heal him and they do but there's another gaslo move oh my god vala taken down they just rush into these stuns this is extremely bad news there comes the next kill this time it's gaslo and illidan that are dying op mage with another drop as well but he himself goes down too it's malfurion and arthurs that die but zeratul wasn't able to make it either and they are going for the win they want to have the victory right now it's only rega only rega nobody else rega by the way Rega is going straight for the core here. He's trying to just like backdoor them. The 
the shields, helping against the minions. There's two catapults already firing, and he's going for that core. Three heroes moving in, 53 against 56, but the catapults already taking down that core as we speak. They're losing so much here. They're down to 40. 40% and they're still not done with the shields. Nobody of those bad boys is going to be able to get away. 21% against 31, 15, 11, 10 against 18, 14, 5% on the core, 2, 3, 1, and the blue team loses. The red team takes it 1% against 0 and Pelly time and the red team, they take the game in the Hero League and win this match. Oh my god. <laughs> what a finish in that game. Holy shit, I mean, come on. That last second, that percentage that we had on that core, 0% to 1% of the life bar, and suddenly the blue team, they just like barely lose it, and Pele Time and his boys, they take the game. And just think about what would have happened if they would have just like backed a bit earlier in the mid game when they lost those additional 10% on the core against those catapults. Oh boy, that would have changed everything. As it happens, you should never give up. You see that the blue team could have won that game. But of course, at the same time, Pally Time's team trying to throw in the towel at some point, And he just like saying, no, it's never too late. We're going to win this. And they did. Really great game. I had a lot of fun there. And well, guys, if you want to see more of Pally Time, of course, just check out the YouTube description. There's a link to his channel as well. If you liked the video, then make sure that you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to Color TV if you have not done that yet. I'm going to see you next time with more Heroes of the Storm here on Color TV. Have a great day. Bye-bye.